feature. I'm going to go ahead and start recording. Um, yeah, if you have questions, like I said, a little bit smaller group today, but, um, you know, feel free to just chime in. Um, we'll keep it uh, kind of loose and casual. Or uh, if you like, you could type it in the chat bubble on the, the webinar service there. So I think there'll be some other folks from C3 joining us as well. So if, if I don't see your comment, I'm sure someone else can chime in and answer any questions you have. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, if, if you were uh, unable to make the morning session, uh, welcome to the afternoon session. We're going to chat a little bit about, um, specifically, I think, training here in 2020. Um, it, it's, been, it's been a very challenging year, I think, for a lot of people. Um, hopefully, everyone that's on here is still training. Um, I think that, um, you know, uh, we've had a, to learn a lot of new skills this year. And I think that's been one of the, the silver linings with, with COVID, training post-COVID. Um, so learning new skills, I think, is important. So hopefully um, it hasn't been too frustrating, although I'm sure it was a bit enraging back in April and May. Um, we'll just kind of go over what we're going to talk about. So 2020, where are we? As I mentioned, a lot of this is going to be about where we are here in 2020, uh, remote learning, how do I engage an audience? What, what are some of the distractions? Um, what are some things I can do as a trainer in live instructor-led sessions? What are some things I can do, you know, when, when my students aren't in the classroom, you know, when they're, when they're training on their own? Um, how can I make, uh, you know, that an engaging experience as well? And then we'll chat a little bit about gamification because that's, that's what we do. You know, we're, we're, we're a gamification company. We make uh, engagement software, and, and hopefully we we help you with uh, student participation, and we help with uh, knowledge retention. So that's kind of what our our mo is. Um, we're going to talk about uh, best practices, how how to, how to use the game in the classroom, and then we'll uh, we'll play a quick game. We'll try to do a few questions, um, and and hopefully some of the folks that are on the call get a chance to do that, and then. Um, We'll, we'll try to send you guys out a, a free license afterwards too, um, a free demo license so you can try it out, uh, see if it looks like something you can use with, with your team. So let's chat first a little bit about um, 2020. Uh, virtual training is hard. I think training is hard. I mean, it's hard to get engagement out of students. Um, you know, I think a lot of um, you know school teachers right now are dealing with students doing hybrid, and that's something that you know I think moving forward. Um, people are going to do. I, I would say one of the silver linings of 2020 is that it's made it's made trainers, it's made management more creative because, quite frankly, we have to be. Um, we have to be able to uh, come up with, with new solutions. We have to be able to, um, you know, use some new tools that we haven't used before. And I think, fortunately, 2020 has, has you know, we we hear that old cliche, you know, think outside the box. Well, I, I think people have been pushed outside the box this year. And, and that's been one of the, you know, silver linings, I think. It's, it's made training more, um, you know, more creative. Um, what are some of the challenges you guys are having with remote training this year? What have been some of the issues that, that, that you've dealt with? I know in our, our morning session, a lot of people talked about um, engagement. You know, gosh, I can't get my students to, um, you know, give feedback. How do I do that? We'll, we'll talk to them about that today. Um, an, another big uh, point was technology issues. Gosh, I, you know, I've never used a Zoom call before. Well, you know, like I said, one of the one of the good things is that people are learning how to, you know, use new tools with their training, um, and, and I think that's that's been kind of a silver lining as well. Um, Another big challenge for, for folks is, um, you know, I don't, I don't know what my students are doing. We're doing live Zoom calls, you know. Maybe, maybe one of my students is playing with their dog or helping their kid with homework or you know, maybe they're going to the bathroom. Hopefully not. But those are all possibilities. And so I think, you know, making sure that your participants are engaged, they're not sitting at home, you know, playing Xbox um, while they're supposed to be listening to you train is a challenge. And, you know, I think games, our games or training games are a good way to, to ensure that people are paying attention and they are learning. So again, some of the common, common challenges inherit to remote, um, remote working, you know, 
we'll talk about those briefly. But, you know, and this is the same as a classroom, you know, creating virtual zombies. I, I more or less just like this picture, but it's true. I mean, if, if people are looking at endless PowerPoint slides, you know, um, gosh, I mean, if you have a long training session, even if it's a couple hours and they're looking at PowerPoint slides for two hours, you're not going to get engagement out of students. It's just not going to happen. Um, you might get one or two, but you know, you, you want everybody. You want, you want feedback from everybody, good or bad. You want to know what, uh, what people are thinking. And I think we don't want to do this. We don't want to turn people into virtual zombies. We don't want to tr turn them into any kind of zombie. So um, making sure that you have engaging content, making sure that um, your sessions are dynamic. People are able to, to give feedback. People are um, challenged. And I think games is a good way to do that. Distracted learning. I mentioned that before. Um, at home, people, you know, there's a lot of distractions. You have family members. Uh, some people have kids. I have, you know, maybe there's a lot of toys around to play with. Maybe, maybe you'd rather watch uh, Days of Our Lives. Well, to do that, I think your training needs to be fun. And if it's not fun for you, it's not going to be fun for your, your participants. So um, we, we want to be able to create things that the people look forward to, things that are interactive. You know, if it's polling, you know, something simple like polling, you know, a lot of webinar services like Zoom or GoToMeeting have polling services built in. Those are simple things that you can do just to make sure people aren't sleeping. Um, you can make things, you know, more interesting with chat functions, breakout rooms, um, and of course games, you know, but I think, I think you just want to bring those people into the fold that are not, and that's important. So what kind of tools, what kind of tools can I use? Um, you know, we're a gaming company. so we know games, but we, we know a few other things too. We have a few other tricks up our sleeve. And I think one thing is just making, making the content manageable. And whether that's through instructor-led uh, classes, you know, making sure that those aren't long and arduous. You know, like I said, those four-hour PowerPoint presentations can, can be a grind. So um, it's important, I think, to be able to, to provide content that, that's fun and engaging. Even if it's self-paced, you know, if people are working at home, I mean, clicking through endless modules, um, you know, is, is not fun. So let's make that process a little bit more enjoyable because if it's more enjoyable, people are going to retain more. And, and that's, that's the goal. Um, again, live virtual sessions, you want to be able to make, make things fun. You want to be able to get feedback. If it's fun, you'll get feedback. Uh, people are going to respond. And people are competitive. You know, no, no one wants to finish last. And I think that's another way to get get that feedback out of it as well. So um, self-paced engagement, I think now more than ever, it, you know, being able to send mobile quizzes and mobile content to people was useful in the past. Now it's necessary because, you know, we've, we've drifted further and further away from offices and we're working from home. Um, we're losing that, that connection. Um, you know, it, we're losing that feeling of uh, being part of a team. And, you know, sending mobile activities, sending self-paced activities as, as just a reminder, hey, we're all, we're all still here. We're all still working. Um, and we're all part of the same team. It's really a, a useful tool. And you can do that with, you know, leader, sending out a, a leaderboard, a question with a leaderboard at the end and being able to, to stay competitive, um, even though you're not in a live session, I think is, is a cool way to do that. Um, you know, getting more dynamic engagement out of your uh, real-time teaching is useful. You can do that with polling. And we have some products that do that as well. But, you know, we do games. And, you know, you're on this call today because, probably because you saw games, you know, virtual engagement, uh, in, engaging or arranging, uh, in arranging. I think ultimately, you know, you clicked on it because it, because we do, you know, we do games. And games hopefully is the, the solution uh, for that, or at least that we think it is. Um, we have a variety of different things you can use that uh, make your training more engaging. You know, we have Hollywood style games, there's animated kind of fun games. And then of course we have, like I said, some other solutions, some polling software with like Tally, um, M learning, mobile learning, uh, micro learning with, with Spark and Whirl um, are a few other tools as well. And if, if you do get a chance, we'll, we'll send out uh, some information, check out our website. You know, we'll have upcoming webinars in, in October that'll be similar to this. Um, but there's also demos there. And if you want to try it out, see what it's like to, to build a game, um, you know, the, the, you'll be able to do that with a demo. And I think you'll be able to show 
uh, your colleagues what that looks like. And, and hopefully that's something fun and, uh, that you can do with, uh, with your group. So yeah, go ahead and check it out. Um, kind of some more information there as well. Uh, but now I think what we'll do, and, and hopefully all the other folks at, at C3 can, can hop on this as well, but we're going to play a quick game because that's I think that's what people came here to do. Um, so if you could go to bravozone.us and type in the ID 0006, um, and you can also do that via QR code, which I'll, I'll show you shortly here. But um, just to get everybody kind of queued up and ready to play the game, uh, we'll do that. I'm going to go ahead and open up my game. And um, we'll be able to play this quickly. So um, this is kind of what it looks like to set the set it up. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just do random teams here. This is our exciting intro screen here. Um, but yeah, if you can go to this website, bravozone.us, or if you want to use your your uh, your phone's camera, uh, you can use your your camera to scan the QR code as well. I would recommend using your mobile device. If you have an iPad or if you have a, a cell phone, I think they tend to work a little bit better. Um, and the reason I say that is because it, I might have mentioned this earlier, but it does keep people off their phones. You know, they're not playing um, whatever the new popular Mario Kart or whatever popular game is. Or, you know, words with friends. Um, they're actually engaged with with this game, and that's that's what you want people to focus on. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I know there's some people that are still logging in. You are able to log in still after I, I advance the screen. Um, if you look at the bottom here, it, it, it still gives you the website, bravozone.us. So again, if you have that browser open, hopefully it's Chrome or Safari, um, go to bravozone.us, and then it's gonna ask you for an ID. And my ID number is 0006, and then you can choose a team. You can choose a red team or blue team, or maybe it assigns you, I forget how I set that up. And um, let us know what your name is. Um, We'll have a, a leaderboard on here in a second too. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the session. Um, we have a couple different categories. My games are all kind of silly and really not that useful, but um, I have fun making them. So uh, this is our generational gap uh, quiz. We're, we're gonna just do a few questions today. We're not gonna have, to have time to answer them all, but a um, couple different categories. I'll try to hit on uh, maybe one of each. Uh, the first one is okay, boomer. Um, millennial slang is the second. And then the last one is Gen Y. So Bruce Jenner, Gen Y. It's, it's, it's a very stupid uh, name, but I came up with it and I'm not proud. Um, let's go ahead and the first question we will ask is, we'll do OK Boomer for 300. So the first question is, where would you find a banana seed? Is it A, in a classroom, B, on a bicycle, C, carnival ride, or D, an airplane? So it looks like on the left here, we've got 80%. Okay, great, yeah, 100% in. Um, a, classroom, C, carnival ride, 20% each, and 60% bicycle. So you can see now that um, the correct answer isn't revealed. And that's a good thing. As an instructor, it allows me to get some more insight, right? So I, I might want to ask my class, um, hey, why did you guys think it was a carnival ride? Or you know, what was your thinking? Why did you choose bicycle? Why did you choose classroom? And you're getting feedback on the feedback that you're already um, getting from the game. So it allows you to do some investigation, figure out where, why there's a knowledge gap, if there is one. And then you can fill it in. So the correct answer is, is B. Great. Next screen, um, here's where we're filling in that knowledge gap. I can provide that extra chunk of information. Explain why uh, banana seats are on bicycles. And, and, and use visuals for that, too. You can use that via videos, uh, images, sounds, and that's stuff that you can all do with the games here. So first question, great. Looks like Team Red is in the win, uh, is winning. It's my favorite avatar. I might need to change the guide out. But, um, let's do, um, let's do millennial slang for a hundred. I'll kind of move around the board here. What does slaps mean? Um, <laughs> I know it's a millennial question, but it's got Captain Kirk in there from the 60s. I, I just kind of like the picture. I thought it was funny, but is it A, strike sharply, snap, crackle, pop, slap, crackle, pop, new cereal, C, to be excellent or amazing, or D, to be shocked? Looks like we got about 80 responses here. We'll wait just one second, see if anyone else wants to 
chime in, but uh, I just kind of like that picture. I wonder what episode that was. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just uh, reveal the, the correct answer. It is, uh, or not the correct answer, the, the polling information. So I'm able to see if there's a knowledge gap there, right? So 20% thinks it's a new cereal, 20% thinks it means to be shocked, 40% to be excellent or amazing. Um, fortunately, uh, C is right, so the 40% get it, um, to be excellent or amazing. Uh, this is a word I've never used in my vocabulary, but um, it's used a lot in music, I guess, for millennials. So uh, this, this song slaps, I think, would be a good example. But uh, again, we're providing context to the, the answer. Why is it C? Or why is it not something else? And you have the opportunity to do that. We'll do one more, and then we'll, we'll, we'll call it a day here. We'll do Bruce Jenner, the 100. This is a bonus question. Um, I had a chance to see these bonus questions in person being used, and I will say it is um, a whole other level of competition that, that we've created with uh, being able to submit these wagers. So if you want to just type in uh, what you'd like to, to gamble with here. Um, so if you're on Team Blue, my guess is you'll probably want to wager at all to get ahead of uh, the white-haired lady here. So if we got about 60% in. And again, this one, this one is uh, creates a lot more parity. So uh, maybe you have a group of people that are behind in the session. Um, and this could be a good opportunity now as I'm waiting for people to uh, enter in their score. I can show, you know, who are some of the top scoring people. So it looks like MP, so somebody just typed in a generic name. Um, some comments you typing in the code. But I'm able to see a leaderboard. I'm able to see individual scoring. Um, as well as the, the, the team scoring. And I think that's useful because, you know, if your team's losing, you, you want to be able to create incentives. And, you know, individually, you can do that as well. So adding another layer of competition. The song, I Want It That Way is by which famous boy band, Instinct, Hanson, New Kids on the Block, or the Backstreet Boys? Looks like we got about 80% in. Um, okay, Instinct and Hanson. Um, no, oh, actually, the correct answer is Backstreet Boys. Okay. And again, um, you can throw in a video if you like. It's a little bit too late in the afternoon here for me to listen to the Backstreet Boys. But if you guys wanted to listen to it, maybe it's a self-paced quiz I sent out. You can do that. Um, let's go ahead and wrap it up. We're going to do one quick question. It's going to be a timed question. And... Um, so try to answer as quickly as possible. That way you'll get the most amount of points here. But uh, this is for Generation Alpha. It's basically for, um, I guess, kids. Kids born after 2010. Um, we'll see how you do here. This question is, who is this famous YouTuber? PewDiePie? Dude Perfect? Smosh? I think it's Smosh. I'm not familiar with a lot of these. Uh, Ninja. And... Uh, Markiplier? I don't know that one either. But um, okay, again, probably a big knowledge gap here, right? So we got 100% response, 20% uh, on three different answers. This again, great opportunity to dive in, figure out why people are answer, asking, uh, um, choosing those answers. And then, of course, we're filling in those gaps. Dude, perfect's the correct answer, um, giving you a little bit more insight onto who they are and um, how popular they are. So who will win? Um, I guess is Team Blue, maybe. No? Very close. One point. Wow. So Team Red is the winner. Uh, pretty dramatic fashion. Um, the top scorer was 0006, since they didn't type in their name. But Jack also um, did a great job. And Corey also on the call, I see. So, um, if I wanted to go back, we didn't we didn't answer all the questions, but this is a great opportunity to do a little bit of additional review at the end of the session. So um, here's the top five questions, maybe with the lowest correct response. Um, you know, we can dive in and just maybe have another chat about it before the session's over. So I see, you know, this question was tough for you. Um, let's go ahead and make sure that we we review that. Ourselves, it's a very easy uh, setup, as I mentioned at the beginning. They're templates. You're plugging in your information, and we're outputting a game for you. So this is what the builder kind of looks like. You're going to go in and uh, decide what type of game you want to play. Is it an instructor-led game, or is it self-paced? 
Um, you can do a little bit of customization. Um, and then ultimately when you dive in with the question, you know, you can make, you can customize them however you want. Um, you can add some categories. We'll put a fake one in here for now. And then as I'm creating the questions, I can make them multiple choice, true or false, select all that apply, and then create those summary preview uh, screens. You can add in timers. You, know, you, you can customize it, get into the weeds with it a little bit more if you'd like. Um, and then you can also save the questions and reuse them later. As I mentioned before, we have other software that you can use for uh, micro learning. So if you wanted to send out, maybe, maybe that Backstreet Boys uh, question is pretty tough. And you want to really ensure that your students remember, you know, the Backstreet Boys. Well, I can just go ahead and drag and drop it into a mobile quiz, send it out. And um, I'm getting a little bit extra uh, retention with that as well. So again, customize the graphics. Um, you don't have to use our logo. You can upload uh, any logo you'd like. Uh, if you want to change your avatars, maybe you don't want the old lady, um, you can do that. Although I recommend using her, which is great. Um, you can do an all-play mode. So we did Teams today, but uh, make it a little bit more interactive. And that's pretty much it. Just a couple quick things you need to click on, and then you're you're good to go. You're playing games, and um, hopefully you're getting a lot of feedback from your students. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Are there any questions? I don't have my chat screen up here. Let me exit it out. Okay. Well, it looks like no questions today. Um, I, I know we had quite a few at the beginning. Um, again, we are a gaming company. This is what we do. So we um, we make games for engagement. Um, if there's, um, looks like someone had a question here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so as I was about to say, it's a, oops, it's an annual subscription. So again, we make the game. It's an annual subscription, um, and it's a uh, fifteen ninety five a year. It's about sixteen hundred dollars per license. Um, there are some discounts available for um, you know larger groups. So if, if you need uh, several licenses, the price goes down. But that's essentially what it is. Um, and if there's no other questions um, today. You can uh, email me at uh, John A at c 3 softworkscom You can check out our website. Uh, you can give me a call. You can text me. Whatever you'd like to do. Um, really appreciate everybody's time. Uh, thanks again for attending today, and um, hopefully we can uh, we can help you bring some more engagement to your training sessions this year. So thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you, John.